Hi, I'm Jan Bratt, and I'm going to draw a picture of the mermaid from my book, The Mermaid. Um, I grew up sailing around the waters in New England with my parents in their big old wooden sailboat. And I love the ocean and everything about it, although I have to admit I was a little bit afraid of s swimming in deep water because of all the creatures that might come and bite my toes. But I've always loved the idea of, of what a mermaid was, a young girl that's part person and part fish. Now, wait a minute. That whole fish business is a little bit problematic because a fish is a fish, and there are a lot of mammals that live in the sea, but they don't have scales, and they ha would have flukes so that their tail would be horizontal. So m traditionally, mermaids are more like a fish where the, f the, f the fins are more vertical and that they do have scales. So I decided to go along with that. But that was one of my big decisions when illustrating my story is what she would look like. And I'm going to use markers, which I'm going to use markers um, instead of my normal watercolors because they'll be a go a little bit faster and I really want to make this like a drawing lesson. And that will be much easier if I can use the markers. So now the Little Mermaid's face is going to start by just making a little oval shape and her hair is going to cover the top part of it. I could actually put that in. And then I'll make little dots about where her eyes are going to be and her nose and her mouth. But then um, when you're drawing, we, we have kind of long necks, human beings, and she's the top part of her is a girl. So she has a little bit of a long neck. And then her torso is almost a triangle shape like this. And I'm going to cover it with her clothes. So she's got her arms coming out, floating in the water. And then this makes it really easy. I don't have to worry about any fingers because her fingers are webbed in my book because it makes it much easier for swimming. And we know that because if you are a diver, you know you put on f uh, fins on your feet that, so your toes are kind of stuck together in the rubber of the fins. It makes you swim faster. <coughs> now her, her, here's her little waist, and then she has her flowing body, and you can see where, as if she has knees, there's a little bend there which you would not see in a fish. And then her tail. I'm going to draw that. I can't think of a proper shape for that, but that's almost a triangle too. So she's a little bit of a series of an oval triangle, almost, a, um, almost like lips, and then this triangle shape here. So I think next I am going to start coloring her in, which is a little bit early. Now first I will draw a little bit of her costume. So I thought she would be clothed in like a seaweed-like material, which I would see underwater kind of floating around and thinking, oh, that is so beautiful the way it has this little fringy floatiness to the seaweed. And then she has two little seahorses that are the clasp that hold it together. So there's the little seahorses, which I have never seen in the wild. And then she has lots of little pearls here that are one of the things in the ocean that is very precious and beautiful. And so, of course, a mermaid would have had lots of those little pearls she would have found on the ocean bottom when she looked in oysters, which is where pearls come from. And so I'm just going to quickly sketch that in. And now I'm going to go on to the coloring. Because she's kind of a gold color because of Goldilocks. And I chose, I'm going to use a combination of this yellowish color and also a little bit of green to do some shadowing because gold a lot of times does have some green to it. A lot of people when they're drawing gold they use a little bit of brown to go and this is this yellow has a little bit of brown in it and I'm going to follow this down and make her block in the basic color of her body. So her name is Kinero which means gold in Japanese. And because my book is set in Okinawa, which is a Japanese island, it's the very southern part of Japan. And it had, in the olden days, its own language. Well, it still has its, its own language, but it has its own kings and queens and was a kingdom, the Ryukyu kin Kingdom. And now it belongs to Japan, or that's where the government is seated. But it's a very, very beautiful place and where I got a lot of ideas for my story.
and they so now this is the green and so I'm creating a little bit of shadow with this it's a very pale green and that's how I can blend these two colors in that look pretty natural so just right underneath where her little top is flowing down I put it making a little shadow with the green and then I can also do the same thing as if this is waving around and I can even go outside the gold to make it look a little bit have more varying colors to it oops there goes my paper now when you're using markers I'm using some newsprint but generally you try to pick a paper that has a smooth surface because then the ink and the marker is not um, sucked into the paper and then they don't last as long but these I love these markers because they have a thick end and a thin end so I can do my details with the thin end so now you see how I went around the edge with a little bit of a darker color and that kind of makes it look like she's uh, three-dimensional I did we also did that on the octopus and then I'm gonna get my yellow back so I can do the seahorses I forgot to do them and the pearls will be kind of in the gray and white range now as far as her skin goes in my book she has um, a lovely kind of tannish skin but I'm gonna use pink here and then go over it maybe with another color because I could not find the correct color for her skin in my box of markers. Now with my watercolors, I don't even give it a second thought. I can just make up my own colors. And I can do that a little bit with the markers because now I can go over it with another color that is similar and it will change the tone a little bit to more look like a fresh tone. Now between her eyes, I made a little line and also her nose and her mouth. And that kind of gives some contours to her face. And also, I can go around the edge of her arms with that same color to give it that three-dimensional look. And the webbing between her fingers, I'm just ignoring because that's something that I would do if I was doing the book and I had lots of little details to do. Then she has a beautiful headpiece. I'll get to her scales later, which is a, oh, let's see, where's my pink again? It's a seashell. It was, this was really fun to think of what, this, what the um, headpiece would look like. It's a, a sea star, and they have bright blue ones in Okinawa, sea stars. They're very beautiful. They even have cushion ones that look like, exactly like a cushion, and so I put that on, one, on the baby octopus's bed, the cushion starfish. So there's her sh scallop shell, and they do have scallop shells in Okinawa many many a lot of people just go to Okinawa just for the beautiful shells and of course there's star shaped sand there which are actually little the skeletons of little animals that um, have died but le what's left is their skeleton so the sand on the beach not all be all the beaches in Okinawa but and some of the beaches look like little tiny stars so I put that in my book and then the starfish is blue I don't know I, there's something about having a blue starfish that I thought was really Amazing because in New England ours are mostly a reddish brown color So there's her star and then she's got beautiful coral all around which I think now It's probably illegal to pick this Well coral is a living creature So you don't want to pick it and you know it's the coral reefs are sometimes endangered because pollution can make them stop growing and it, they're made up of colonies of thousands of little creatures so there's her coral piece but I would think that she probably this was in the olden days it would probably be okay for her to have the coral because she is a sea creature I'm just gonna outline that starfish with the blue the starfish are really really blue and then I'm also gonna use this when I do her hair which I'm gonna do next and I had to think a lot about what her hair would look like because the, when you see the black, it's immediately going to draw your eye because it's so dark. I'm going to start out with gray first. And I'm going to make a few stripes here, and that's going to be where the shine of her hair will be indicated. So here's her hair, and now I'm going to cover this with black. 
And it's also going to be a way of showing how it's floating around because it's underwater. One of the challenges was when I was doing this book, everything is underwater. So, you know, when you're taking a bath and you kind of go down into the bath water, your hair just kind of floats around if you have long hair. And then I've got a little bit of blue here. So that's the way her hair would be the whole time. And when I first did the book dummy, which is my practice book, um, I put a, her hair in a bun and my art director... Marika said, you know, wouldn't it be pretty to have the long hair just flowing around in the water? I said, oh, yeah, I kind of agree with you. So then that's what I did. So I'm putting some little blue highlights in her hair before I put the black on because I want her to look a little bit otherworldly. Well, oceanic would be a better word for that because she's not exactly um, from another world. She's just from the underwater world. Now, I am going to go get a better black for this picture, and continue on in our hair. And then I'm going right out to the edge of that dark, I mean, of, of the gray, because I want it to look as if it's kind of floating. And I left a little space for her ear there. And I got the idea of putting gray around the black from looking at some Japanese prints when I was in Japan. I hadn't really thought of that technique. And that's way too much white, so I'm going to put more black to cover that up. Because she wouldn't have that big a shine mark. And you can kind of get away with anything when you're drawing underwater because the light is, sometimes it's diffuse and shines through, you know, um, feet, lots of feet of water. And sometimes you're on the surface of the water and this light shines through. Most of the really cool creatures are near the surface. Well, I wouldn't say cool creatures. I would say a colorful creatures because there are some really interesting ones at the depths of the ocean. So this looks a little bit scribbly because it's marker, but when I would be working with my watercolors, I could make it look more fluid looking. So when you're drawing your character, when you're thinking of the colors, you don't want one color, well, you could want that, but be aware that one color can dominate the other ones because you can see how this has changed the, the picture just because it's so dark. And that was one of the aspects of it. Because like she could have had green hair or the color of the coral perhaps, or maybe like a fish's scale. And fish have such beautiful colors in the waters around Okinawa. I almost thought about making her have all the colors of a beautiful tropical fish. So now her eyes, I'm just gonna put like two little points where her pupils are. And then I've got a darker reddish color for her mouth, and she's going to be smiling. She's very adventuresome. No pink cheeks on this one, but I do have a little bit of a darker, I hope this is going to work, dark, darker pink to put around her eyes so that they will have a little bit more definition and expression. I can do the same thing with her nose and chin. And then, oh, I think she needs eyebrows. And then the last thing I'm going to do is put some of the gold highlights on it. So she's looking as if she's curious. So there's her little face. She has her, all her friends are fishes. But I'm sure that she has a merman father and a mermaid mother. Now I have a really good gold here. And so I'm just going to accentuate that where I did the shadow with the green and put some of the scales. And I just make a little scallop shape and come down. But here's a little trick, because I want her to look like she's three-dimensional. When I get to the edge, I'm gonna make the sh scales a little bit thinner, so it looks like they're curving around her body. And that would be an illusion that I'm doing in order to make it look like she's has roundness. 
So flat in the middle. And then as I get to the edges, I'm making them thinner. And that would be a good thing to practice on a little piece of paper before you worked on your own drawing. And then she, she has some, somewhat like a fish-like tail. So it has like little um, areas where you can tell that there's a stronger bone there. So she's just about done. And an artist should always, I think I even have another gold that might even be shinier. So maybe some of these scales I'll take one or two and highlight them because you know that's the way a fish looks underwater every once in a while one of the scales will just take you know, the light will shine and reflect from it and it will look really beautiful so i'm going to try to use that that um <clears throat> what i noticed when i was swimming underwater and so an artist should always sign their work also i have some huh, i have some fingernail polish with sparkles on it and i think i'll put a few little sparkles on her too because so many things under the ocean are iridescent and sparkle because they're so shiny. And that's why it's so much fun to go underwater and see that whole world. So there's a few sparkles for her. And then I will sign it. And with my best wishes, please have a great time drawing your mermaid and use your own imagination in order to decide what her color hair is and her ornaments and her scales. <laughs>